Verse number 22, the Bible says, Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. So, this may not have been true. Of course, God said that there were, you know, 7,000 didn't bow the knee. Now, it doesn't mean they were prophets, but he's saying, look, I'm the only guy left. Whether there was any other prophets anywhere else, it doesn't matter because what matters is, is how he was thinking at this time for the point that I'm making about, about the friendship, about someone being willing to stand with you, right? Stand with the man of God, even when it seems like everyone's against you. Even when you have, no, I mean, everyone believes this. We got 450 prophets of Baal over there, and they're all doing just fine, and they have great congregations. And Elijah's going, I'm the only one. I'm the only guy right here. But of course, Elijah has the strength and the nerve and the faith in God to keep going and has that great victory. But what happens right after that great victory? Now, at that great victory, you know, God answers by fire and it kind of stirs up the people. And he's like, all right, now kill all the prophets of Baal, right? And they slay the prophets of Baal and everything's great. And then he leaves. But then in the very next chapter, you have Jezebel, Ahab's wife who hears about it, and then she issues this thing like, you know, your, your head's next, because she's angered that he killed, had all these prophets of Baal killed. And then he starts, you know, running away, and, and kind of, he goes from this great high of this victory down to this real low of, of feeling defeated and kind of wanting to quit. And look at verse number 13 in chapter 19 jump down or excuse me verse number two in chapter 19. Let's look at let's look at this uh, This verse here 19 first Kings 19 verse number two the Bible says then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them By tomorrow about this time and when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba Which belonged to Judah and left his servant there but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. So he's already gotten discouraged after that victory, and you know what I think? If he had other people there supporting him and helping him and, and being a friend to him and just standing with him, he probably wouldn't have ever gotten this low and felt this you know, defeated because of Jezebel. If he would have had someone to stand with him, he might not have gotten to this point. Now, of course, God strengthens him. So even if you don't have a friend, you can still rely on the Lord. God gives him the food. He sends an angel. He, you know, he wakes him up. He just you know, falls asleep, sends an angel, gives him food, and, and you know, gives him food again. And he goes on his journey, and, and the Lord speaks with him. We're going to jump down to verse number 13 just a second there. But... Um, God sustains them, but how much more? Would to God that people didn't need to get to the point of not having anybody, right? Obviously, we always rely on the Lord, but if you had a friend there with them to strengthen him, how much more might he have been able to do and, and not be discouraged? And I don't, want, I don't even want to call it easily, but as easily as he did, because it's not easy what he had to do. It's not easy what he went through. I'm not saying that he was easily discouraged, but it wouldn't have happened so quickly had he had someone there with him. Jump down to verse number 13. The Bible says, And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So again, he's talking to God and going, he just bringing up the fact that I'm the last one, God. I'm the, obviously, this is, this is weighing on him. I'm the last one, and now they're trying to kill me. Verse number 15, And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room, and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, 
and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So God is letting him know, hey, there's 7,000 more so that he could at least get encouragement from that. But where were these 7,000 when Elijah was making the stand? Where are they? How come they're not encouraging him? How come they're not standing with him? This is why it's so important to have the friends and drop the encouragement. And when everyone's going against you, just be there. Be the friend to the man of God. Be the man, you know, friend to the Elijah that's, that, that is, is standing in the face of everybody. <laughs> going, thus saith the Lord. And just standing for what's right.